Lesson 14, I will solve multi-step word problems involving converting mixed number measurements to a single unit. Okay, so today we're going to go right straight to our problem set. So I want you to go ahead and get out your problem set, and you're going to notice that problem 1 is the exact same problem on your problem set. So we're going to be using that RDW process. We're going to read, we're going to draw, we're going to write a number sentence, and then we're going to write a word sentence to solve this problem. So let's begin with reading. A cartoon lasts one half hour. A movie is six times as long as the cartoon. How many minutes does it take to watch both the cartoon and the movie? So I want you to think of something that you could draw to go along with this. Are you hearing a total problem or are you hearing a comparison problem? When I hear words like six times as long, I automatically start thinking comparison. So let's go ahead and draw our C for cartoon, and we know how long the cartoon lasts because it says that it lasts a half an hour. And then we know that the movie is six times as long, so I'm going to draw. Obviously it's longer, and we know exactly how much longer it is. It's six times as long, so I'm going to go ahead and divide this into six parts. Ideally, these would be exactly the same length as this one, okay? And then each of these are going to be a half an hour also. Now, after as I'm writing this in all of these boxes, I'm thinking to myself, okay, what does the question ask? Is it asking how long is the movie? Is it asking how much longer is the movie? What's it asking? Well, it asks how many minutes does it take to watch both the cartoon and the movie. Now, I also want you to notice that it says how many minutes. It doesn't say how many hours, it says how many minutes. So we really want to know this, and I know it's kind of hard to see that, but this is what we're trying to figure out, the total of both. So how could we find this? What would our number sentence look like? Well, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half hours. So if I did seven times one half, that gives me seven half hours, which would be the same thing as six halves and one half, which would be three and a half hours. But the question is, how many minutes? Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour, right? So 60 times three would be 180, and then a half an hour would be 30 minutes. So together, I would have 210 minutes. So now all I have to do is write a sentence to go along with this. So go ahead and answer this question with a sentence. Go ahead and pause the video while you write your sentence and then come back. Alright, let's take a look at some examples of how they solved it. So look at what they did here. So they didn't have to write one half an hour seven times. That was pretty smart, wasn't it? They only wrote it once and then it was assumed that all of these was a half an hour. We might have to use that one. So in solution A, they went ahead and said, okay, well, a half an hour is equal to 30 sixties, so that will be 30 minutes. So they went ahead and did 30 times 7, that was 210 minutes. That was pretty smart, wasn't it? And here's how we did it. We did solution C, and then we converted that to minutes. And then in solution B, they did the same thing, except they did, um, when they came up here, they multiplied it times 60, and here's their sentence. It takes 210 minutes to watch both the cartoon and movie. All right, let's move on to problem number two. A large bench is seven and a half feet long. It is 17 inches shorter than a shorter bench. How many inches long is the shorter bench? All right, so are you hearing some more of those comparison words? Me too. So I'm hearing that they are comparing the large bench to a shorter bench. And we know that the large bench is seven and a half feet long, it tells us. So I'm gonna go ahead, and, or seven and one six feet, I'm sorry. Seven and one six feet long. And we know that we have a shorter bench, but we don't know how long it is. We just know that it is 17 inches shorter. And we wanna know how many inches long is the shorter bench. So what kind of problem is this? Well, this is subtraction, right? I've got seven, and one six feet, and I'm trying to take away 17 inches. Well, that's kind of hard to do, isn't it? It's kind of hard to take away inches from feet. There's a couple of strategies that we could use here. We could convert all of these to inches, and you know, it does say how many inches, so we're gonna have to do that anyway. So that might be the best strategy. Let's just go ahead and change all of this to inches. 
So there are 12 inches in a foot. So 7 times 12, do you know what that would be? That would be 84. That's 84 inches. And then we have 1 sixth of a foot. So what would be 1 sixth of 12? Well, that would be 2, right? So we have 2 inches. So that gives me 86 inches minus 17 inches. Well, 86 minus 10 would be 76. And then when I take away 7 would be 69. So I'm getting 69 inches. So let's think about does that make sense? Well, we have 7 feet and it's not a whole lot shorter. It's only 17 inches shorter. So I think it does make sense. All right, so let's go ahead and write our sentence. Go ahead and pause the video, write your sentence, and then come back and we're going to look at some of the solutions. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and wrote your sentence. And let's take a look at what they did. So you can see here's their type diagram, and it looks very much like ours, doesn't it? And you can see that they have their 7 and 1 6 feet, 17 inches longer. And here's their number sentence just like ours. They got the same answer as us. So when I look through here, here they converted everything to inches just like we did. This is what we did right here, solution A. But at solution C, you can see that they went ahead and converted 17 inches to feet and inches and then went ahead and subtracted feet and then when they got an answer, they went ahead and converted that to inches. Solution B, they used the arrow way. Um, solution D is pretty much like solution, um, it's like a lot like solution C except they made it, they made the shorter bench or the 17 inches, they made it into a fraction. Okay, lots of different solutions there. All right, let's look at problem three. The first container holds four gallons, two quarts of juice. The second container can hold one and three-fourths gallons more than the first container. Altogether, how much juice can the two containers hold? So what kind of problem are you hearing here? I'm hearing a comparison problem, aren't you? So we've got our first container. And it says here, I'm going to go ahead and use this tool so that my tape diagram is not a mess. And it holds four gallons and two quarts of juice. And then we've got a second container and it holds more. It holds one and three-fourths gallons more. So when I draw this tape diagram, I'm going to draw it bigger than the first. And we don't know how much it holds. All we know is that it is one and three-fourths of a gallon more than container two, and it says altogether how much juice can both containers hold. Okay, so we've got a couple of choices here. We can figure out how much the second container holds, and then we can add them both together, or we can say to ourselves, okay, well we know that this is four gallons and two quarts, and we know that from here to here is one and three-fourths gallon. So we could just go ahead and add all of this together like this. We could say, okay, well, I've got four gallons, two quarts, and I've got that twice, plus four gallons, two quarts, plus one and three-fourths gallon. So we could add all of our gallons together. This would be four, eight, nine and three-fourths gallons. And then we've got four quarts. Now we know that four quarts is equal to what? One gallon. So altogether that would give us ten and three-fourths gallon. Now when I look back up here, it doesn't say like how many gallons do each both containers hold, it's just how much juice. So that says to me that I should be able to leave my answer just like this. Ten and three-fourths of a gallon. All right, so let's go ahead and write our sentence, and then let's check to see what kind of solutions they came up with. So go ahead and write your sentence, and then we'll come back. Okay, so taking a look at what they drew, you can see here their tape diagram looks very similar to ours. And then here's solution A. We got four gallons and two quarts. It looks like um, they went ahead and changed everything to quarts and got 43 quarts. And then over here, this is the same thing that we did. The only difference is, is they changed that three-fourths of a gallon to three quarts, and they got 10 gallons and three quarts, which is the same answer that we got. We just left it as a fraction.
All right, a girl's height is three and one third feet tall. A giraffe's height is three times that of the girl. How many inches taller is the giraffe than the girl? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our tape diagram here or model this. I'm hearing another comparison problem, aren't you? So we have girl and we have giraffe. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and write the word girl, and then I'll go ahead and write giraffe. It's kind of ironic that they start the same, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead. We know that the girl is shorter than the giraffe, and then we have a giraffe here who's three times as tall. And I'm going to use that trick that we saw on that one because that saved us a lot of writing. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this into three boxes, and I'm just going to go ahead and label this three and one-third feet and that means all of these are three and one-third feet. So let's look at what we're trying to figure out. It says how many inches taller is the giraffe than the girl? So it's not asking for how tall is the giraffe. It's not asking for their heights together. It's basically asking for this. How much taller? Well, if each of these are three and one-third feet, now it does say inches. So that means that we've got how many three and one-thirds right here? Well, we have two, right? So I've got three and one-third feet plus three and one-third feet and that's going to equal six and two-thirds feet. So now I'll have to do is change that into inches. So I've got six and two-thirds. So six feet, that would be six times twelve, which is seventy-two inches, and then two-thirds. So if I took a foot and divided it into thirds, and remember, all together, this is 12. So what would each of these be? Well, these would be 4, right? So a third of a foot is equal to 4, and I've got two of them, so that would be 8 inches. So that means that the giraffe is 80 inches taller than the girl. So let's go ahead and write our statement. The giraffe, I'm going to let you write this. The giraffe is 80 inches taller than the girl. Okay, let's look at their solutions. Okay, so their tape diagram looks very similar to ours. So in solution A, they went ahead and converted everything to inches. So they went ahead and said, okay, one foot is 12 inches, so three feet is 36 inches, so three and one third foot is 40 inches, and they knew that they had two of those which would be 80 inches. Okay, here's very similar to what we did. We did two times three and one third foot, which is six and two thirds, and they converted that to inches. And then over here, they did the same thing except they um, changed this to inches off from the beginning, and then they figured it out. But we still got the same answer, okay? All right, so let's take a look at number five. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to solve that one together. Okay, so here's problem number five. It looks a little different, but it's the same problem. Five ounces of pretzels are put into each bag. How many bags can be made from 22 and 3 fourths pounds of pretzels? So this is not a comparison problem, is it? This one's a little bit different. This one is like a total, because I'm hearing that I've got a total of 22 and 3 fourths of a pound pretzels. So I've got 22 and 3 fourths of a pound. And I'm trying to make bags of 5 ounces, and I want to know how many bags can be made. So remember, that would be the question mark would be here. How many 5 ounces can I get out of this? So what kind of problem would this be? It's not subtraction. This would actually be division, but I can't divide ounces in pounds. The first thing I want to do is take these pounds and convert these to ounces. So I've got 22 and 3 fourths pounds, and I'm trying to change these into ounces. So first of all, I know there's 16 ounces in a pound, so I'm going to have to do 22 times 16. So I've got 22 times 16. There's a couple of ways to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and use standard algorithm which would be like this, 132, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my 22 and add this together, and that gives me 352. So 22 pounds would be 352 ounces, and then 3 fourths of a pound, so if I've got 16, and I divide it into 4 parts, 
each part would be four ounces. So if I've got three of those, that means I have 12. So I've got 352 plus 12, which would be 364 ounces. So I need to take that 364 and I need to divide it by five. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of long division here. So let's go ahead and divide this out. So there would be, I can't take 5 into 3, but there would be 7 fives and 36, and that would be 35. That leaves 110. I'm going to bring down the 4. That would be 2 minus 10. So that leaves me with a remainder of 4. So let's think about how this makes sense to, this, to the question, because it says how many bags can be made. It doesn't make sense to say you can have 72 remainder four bags. That remainder would just be left over. So the answer would be 72 bags of pretzels can be made. Okay, let's look at how they solve this. All right, so their tape diagram is very similar, and they did the same thing we did. They converted to ounces, and then they divided. So they got the same answer, 72 bags. All right, let's take a look at our very last problem here. 20 servings of pancakes require 15 ounces of pancake mix. How much pancake mix is needed for 120 servings? So we've got 20 servings requires 15 ounces, and we want to know how much mix is needed for 120 servings. Hmm. All right, so... For 20, it's 15 ounces, and this is for 20 servings. So how many servings, how many 20 servings are there in 120? So let's think about this for a minute. So this would be 40. This would be 60 servings. I'm halfway there. This would be 80. This would be a hundred, and then one more would be 120. So there's 15 ounces for every 20 servings, and we've got 120 servings. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six fifteens. So 15 times six would be 90, so that would be 90 ounces. So we would just say 90 ounces of mix is needed for 120 servings. Oh, and we have a bonus. We have to do the bonus. The mix is bought in two and a half pounds. How many bags will be needed to make 120 servings? Hmm. So we've got... 90 ounces, we need 90 ounces, and the bags come two and a half pounds. So we want to know how many of these two and a half pounds we need for 90 ounces. So first we need to change these pounds to ounces. So I've got two and a half, so that would be 16 times 2, which is 32. And then a half would be eight, so that means that there are 40 ounces in a bag. So we've got 40 ounces. So I would need another bag, and that would give me 80 ounces, and then I would have to buy another bag to get 120 ounces. So three bags would be needed for 120 servings. Would there be some left over? There would, right? There'd be 30 ounces left over, but we would still need to buy three bags in order to have enough for 90 ounces. So let's take a look at what they have here. So they said 90 ounces, and then they said to make 120 servings, three bags will be needed because two bags is only 80 ounces, but we need 90. All right, so that was some problem solving with our mixing from com um, converting smaller units to larger units. We did a lot of tough stuff today. I'm glad that you hung in there and did your best.